Watch your course, tell me where you at, your motivation guy. Ladies and gentlemen, I am back, the one and only, your friend, Keith Allen, man. I'm here to make you guys the greatest Fortnite player you could possibly be. You know, we've recently talked about controller settings that can help you dominate in Chapter 3. However, what about keyboard and mouse? Hey, where you guys at? You know, with KBM being one of the most dominant control schemes, like, in the world of competitive Fortnite, you know, it's just important to really figure out, you know, which settings are going to help you show off your skills and really help give you an edge over all the other competitive players. And so this is what we're here for today, man. So this is why we're here today, as we explore the best keyboard and mouse settings in Chapter 3 and how to find your own settings as well. You guys ready for this? Well, you better get that bunch of crunch. That's my favorite candy. And let's get this going. Okay, so optimizing your keyboard and mouse can be somewhat simple, you know, if you've been playing Fortnite competitively for like the past few seasons. You know, it's only a matter of adjusting what you already know to a new play style or even new preferences. However, changing your settings can be quite beneficial depending on the type of meta, right? Weapons play differently at times, right? Sometimes weapons will be way better than others, so the meta starts to revolve around those specific ones. And not only that, you know, with new mechanics, you need to find the best way to incorporate that into your gameplay. So really, settings evolve just as frequently as the seasons, and you're going to need to follow them closely, guys, if you want to have the most flexibility as a player. So let's talk about sliding and crouching because these two mechanics are in the limelight in chapter three. Okay, as you might have already figured out, you know, both these functions share the same key binding. So it's gonna be hard to separate these two unless you yourself make a little extra effort to manually memorize different key binds. That's right, guys. For this, what you're going to wanna do is create a separate key binding so you can use it exclusively for sliding. Why is that? Good question. Well, you wanna make sure that your fingers react properly when you wanna slide and when you wanna crouch. The benefit of playing on keyboard is that there are multiple keys that you can apply this to. Since this function is separated only by how long you keep holding the key down, you want to adapt accordingly so your muscle memory can really just adapt to these two actions. The only thing you want to keep in mind, guys, is that you want your finger making a rapid click for crouching and holding down for sliding. Meanwhile, you can also control how long you need to hold the crouch key to really slide that gives you multiple options, not just for sliding quicker, but for those who want to keep crouching more with less accidental slides. If you intend to use sliding more often, then you want to lower your hold time to 1.2. This is a good setting for frequent slides and should really get the trick done for the more aggressive and fast paced gameplay that we're seeing. However, if you want the closest thing to crouch spamming in today's meta, then you want to increase the setting instead, thus increasing the delay between a crouch and a slot. Now, if you're looking to upgrade more than your crouching skills, then how about visiting the link below and checking out AimLab. AimLab can help you become the sharpshooter you always dreamed of. With fully customizable exercise routines and detailed analysis of your skills, you're going to see improvement in a variety of games such as Warzone, Valorant, and yours truly, Fortnite. All right, so keyboard and mouse is the key to becoming one of the fastest builders. You know, with so many keys, you can easily key bind your builds in a way your fingers can just have easy access, right? The removal of delay will make you much more responsive than other players. However, there is another secret that we're going to let you in on, and it's probably something that you may not have noticed at first glance. When we talk about keys, your mind may automatically think of keyboard keys. However, key bindings also extend towards your mouse if you're playing with one that has extra buttons. And so this is where you're going to want to, you know, to bind walls and ramps. Of course, for this, you know, we're going to be assuming you have at least two extra buttons on the left side of your mouse since this is where your thumb rests. Normally, your thumb would not perform any action, but, you know, for the best settings, you want your thumb doing its fair share of work as well. Walls and ramps are really good for mobility and defense. And so by keeping them on your mouse, you can shield yourself from damage easier and you can gain elevation quickly. It also frees up the amount of work your left hand does as it manages, you know, movement and reloads, traps, inventory, and so much more. However, while we do recommend taking advantage of your mouse buttons for faster building, it isn't the only option you have either. You know, all that matters is that you're comfortable reaching your walls and floors, ramps and roofs. You know, one of the most recognizable players in the world, Booga, has a preference of just using the DXCV keys for builds. However, other pros such as Tifu have found success in the past using keybinds closer to WASD, such as QER and even the number five key. Sensitivity is like one of the more important settings and it comes in two varieties. All right, your mouse sensitivity and the sensitivities for scoping and tracking. Okay, your mouse sense allows you to really scan areas quickly as well as just get in position to make edits and builds. It also allows you to get in firing position when an enemy is just coming from behind 
inside you. Your scoping and tracking sense, on the other hand, are for, you know, when you raise your weapon and you start tracking your opponent. This is when, you know, you're actively trying to get your shots to hit so you can just beam your opponent or just tag them when they least suspect it. All right, so let's just start off with the mouse sense and for the most optimized settings you want, okay, 0.8 horizontal and 0.8 vertical. And so this tends to be like a balance setting that gives you a proper competitive speed while also giving you guys good accuracy. You know, it's really the jack of all trades and definitely a competitive standard that you should consider. However, since accuracy also depends on the player to have steady hands, some pros can just really crank those numbers even higher since they can really rely on their own steadiness to really take advantage of higher speeds. But, you know, don't assume that sensitivities are permanent, right? Really, in fact, like looking at Booga again, he used to run a 6.7% mouse sensitivity, which is around the low sense. But this month, he's found success using almost double. The sense at about now is like 12%. This is just proof, man, that a good player needs to evolve if they want to keep up. All right, so one good way to really figure out your own personal sensitivity guys is to start at 0.8 mark and just move it up or down depending on how comfortable you are at using it like does it feel too fast do you need more accuracy you know keep in mind that it's just better to have consistency and stability over like crazy speeds especially when you're just starting out as you train and improve you can just make adjustments as your reflexes get accustomed to the gameplay all right so for scoping and tracking okay you want to keep them both at around 40 percent like you want to make sure that you can track your opponent properly without sliding all across the screen and just losing them. Players like Mongrel are currently using 33%, which is close to what we can get with 40%. And so generally for these settings, you might see yourself like moving your arm around the mouse pad. Now, if you look at players such as like Clicks, you're gonna find him using extremely high senses such as 90.9% targeting and 82.7% scope. For these settings, it really relies more on your wrist flicks since the sensitivity doesn't warrant as much arm movement. Key bindings vary from player to player. You know, every hand is different ranging from flexibility to size. So the most important thing that you need to take into account guys is that really to become a fast and responsive player, your fingers need to be able to reach these keys as fast as possible. Like you need to train each of your fingers to perform as few functions as possible so they're always in position, you know, when and where you need to have them. Luckily, you can find alternatives that can really enhance your setup either by giving you more room for your mouse or just simply cutting off part of the keyboard entirely. All right, so consider using a half keyboard if you want to free up, you know, some table space. Freeing up space on your table, oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, it can just be great for having more arm movement for your mouse. And this can help you gain more accuracy as well as you have for your movement. And so the truth is, is that, you know, in most games, you're going to most likely be using the space between tab, caps, and shift all the way towards T, G, and B. Everything else is going to be too far, you know, really to reach in most cases. And key binding essential actions to these keys would only just slow down in a competitive meta. You know, we also mentioned using a mouse with more buttons, but just don't assume that it means it needs an entire dial tone, right? Like perhaps like this would be good for like an MMO. However, for a competitive third person shooter, having two buttons is good and really a safe option to have. Okay, so if you're struggling to hit your mark, then don't forget to visit Aim Lab so you can get a better idea of where you need to focus on your training. Okay, so now for some additional key bind settings, the next thing that you want to do is eliminate the use of scrolling. Okay, so if you've been playing Fortnite on the default settings, then scrolling has been your go-to for like switching weapons. This, however, is not the most optimal way to do this. Like instead, what you want to do is use the numbers key 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. This is one major advantage KBM players have over controller and it's directly switching from one weapon or item to the next without even having to scroll through each one. So now all you really want to do guys is get your muscle memory accustomed to hitting the right keys. For this, you want to set up your weapon slot preferences to assault rifle, SMG, sniper, and healing. And this way you can just cut organizing your loadout from your gameplay and just let the game automatically do it for you. Like if you would just prefer, you could even just also use the sniper slot for a shotgun. However, with the current meta, uh, there are just better weapons that you can use now. Specifically the SMG and the assault rifles. Besides, like the scroll on your mouse can be better used for other settings, which we're gonna get into later. But you guys saw me, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Once again, this is your motivation guide, the one who believes in you, the one who is rooting for you. Come on, I want you to be the best version of yourself that you can be, not only playing this game, but also in life. I believe in you guys, man, but you have to believe in yourself. You gotta have the faith, man. Don't lose the faith, keep going, stay confident, hey, and stay on your grind. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.